so it's going to be new to her so she's going to feel like a new student just like you all and um, any questions anybody has anything different that you think is going to come mm -hmm. in this project I'm excited about trying to do water okay and sky right. those right. are like the biggest and the shape of boats we always talk about boat that. shapes are hard that's why I didn't do a rowboat or a um, fishing boat mm -hmm. this time because Towns you did a lovely boat photo from our trip to Fran uh, France Cook. couple yeah. yes Capri. that was the photo you took Cassis. 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 Yeah. So you know what I'll do? I'll insert, that. I'll, insert, I'll insert that so everybody can see it. See yeah. your photo versus my painting. Oh, there we go. <laughs> we'll insert Leela's photo. And I forgot to tell you that Leela is here with us again today. She's doing our filming again. <laughs> That's my normal. <laughs> and um, we are going to go ahead and get started with step one. And be sure you get set up with your paint. Lay it out uh, according to the palette diagram. Go ahead and put every color out. You, you may need it because there's a lot of mixing that goes on. Even though you don't see a lot of red and orange in this painting, you might need to put some of that color into some of these colors here. So um, go ahead and pause as many times as you need to to get caught up with us if we paint a little too fast. And we'll see you back here at step one. On a day when the wind is perfect, the sail just needs to open and the world is full. Okay, so we're ready to start step one, and that is the drawing. So the first thing I do is I take my brush, just dip it into your water to kind of loosen it up a little bit. It gets kind of stiff after it dries. So just loosen it up, and then maybe pick up a drop of water. Bring it over here to your yellow ochre. That's that second yellow that's kind of mustardy yellow. It's a nice, opaque, dry, dryish kind of paint compared to some of the others. So we use it to draw because it dries a little faster. So if this was a drawing class, I would tell everybody to draw the boat, we need to mark our parameters. And just to make parameters easier to follow, I'm gonna ask everybody to just make a little dot at the halfway point on each side of your canvas. And that'll help us judge where some other parts of the drawing are gonna go. So for example, the sailboat, the top of the sailboat, is just about a half an inch under that center dot. So we're just going to make another dot. That's going to be the top of the sailboat. Then I'm going to go here. Let's mark the bottom of the sailboat. I think that bottom of the sailboat is about two inches up from that center point. So two inches up from the bottom, make a little dot. And then this two inches right here is about exactly the same as this two inches here. So I'm going to come down at about one quarter way and come over two inches to make the dot for the front of the boat. And now back here at the back of the boat, I only have just about a half an inch, or maybe let's say five eighths, a little more than a half an inch. And with these three dots at the bottom, I'm gonna start drawing in the bottom of the boat. So I did a little U shape here the back of the boat and I'm making a little curve and coming out with a little angle at the top and just the skinniest little oval for the inside of that boat and now when we look at the sails we see two kind of two triangles so the bottom of the first triangle is right here over the back half of the boat and then it comes straight up almost to that little dot that we drew up top. And then the side of the triangle, instead of it being perfectly straight, we have just a little curve, so it looks like the sail's kind of billowing in the wind, just a little bit. And then the front sail is definitely full of wind. So it's, uh, I'm gonna draw the bottom a little closer to the boat. 
and I'm going to draw the front of the sail as a, I'm going to curve this line back to that little dot. And I'm going to really show that it's windy by really curving that center, that uh, left side of the sail. And then I'm going to draw a little mast coming down. Sometimes you have to dip in the water to loosen up that paint a little bit, thin it out so you can draw with it better. And um, then I'm going to draw the horizon line, and that I think that's just below center. Go back behind that boat. And then the clouds. I love this photograph I found uh, on the Royalty Free website. It has this big diagonal. So it looks so summery to have this big diagonal cloud. So I'm just going to come back across the top with a kind of a wavy line indicating this kind of horizontal, uh, somewhat horizontal diagonal band of clouds. And it had another little band of clouds above it. Just squiggling some lines, kind of going across the um, sky. And then check your drawing, check the instruction sheet. You can look at the drawing there and you can pause the video and catch up with me here. Um, we're gonna be doing some squiggly little lines that are the reflection down here. And um, get caught up and we'll meet you back here at step two. On a day when the wind is perfect, the sail just needs to open and the world is full of beauty. Okay, Towns, are you ready? We're gonna start Got it. step two, okay. So what we're going to do now is we're going to pick up our palette knife that we use to mix our paint and it has this kind of um, a bendy, half of it is kind of bendy. So I always compare it to like a spatula in the kitchen. You don't, you don't use the back end of the spatula, you kind of use that, that flexible end. So I'm going to take my palette knife, we're going to start with the sky and we're going to, we're going to make three shades of blue for the sky. So we're going to start with the thalo blue. Now I know in the palette layout we've got cerulean and ultramarine, but in your paint kit, this time I'm asking you to get out this beautiful thalo blue. It's P-H-T-H-A-L-O, thalo. And uh, I'm going to take, it's very strong so you don't need much of it. I'm going to take just a little bit of that thalo. I'm going to reach over here and get some white. And we're going to make up kind of a medium blue. So we're going to have a dark blue, a medium blue, and a much lighter blue for the sky. So I'm going to pick up a little more phthalo this time, and a little less white to be my darkest pile here. So we are heading into summer here in Louisville, and we are getting, it's getting warm, very hot here in Louisville in the summer and it's one of those hot days today so these ladies didn't mind coming in Not to help me a little bit. Not at all. It gets a little too hot out there. Air conditioning in the no dogs here today so you won't hear any snoring. Hmm. <laughs> have they met Grace yet? They have not met Gracie yet, and back in the last video, we talked about that. I know. I will have to have you all meet my new Australian Shepherd puppy. And she will have, at that point, will have had her first pool party. Yes. We're doing pool party yes. on Sunday. And, and last month's video, we actually put some pictures of the doggy pool party in at the end of the video. And we're going to have some new pictures as of this weekend. So yeah. I'll have to keep you all keep you all posted on. Uh, the doggy pool parties that we have here. Kevin, do you have that, is that your lightest shade of? Lightest? So the lightest shade, I, I took the white and I just added a little, little tiny bit of the phthalo. Okay. So when you're making a light color, the lightest colors are called, if it's close to white, like a very, very light color, it's called a tint. And when you're making a tint, you take white and then add the color, just a speck of the color in there, and uh, you'll just get that very, very, what we call very light tint of a color. So I'm going to take my brush now, make sure it's clean from that yellow ochre, 
that we drew with. And I'm going to take my brush and I'm going to sweep, like I'm sweeping with a broom, I'm gonna sweep that paint up, load that brush nicely, and then I'm gonna start spreading it up here. That looks a little dark. I'm gonna put a little more white in there. I'm gonna put a little more white. My dark looks too dark when I got it on the canvas. I'm just gonna put a little more white in there. Hair. Speaking of dog hair. I got dog hair in the <laughs> How many dogs work. are going to be at the dog par pool party this week? Well, let's see. I've got three going. How's this going? Um, I think I'm going to leave a little rugby home. Oh, really? Keep the try in the picture if you all are wondering. <laughs> outside. The tricolor. The tricolor. So, you're bringing, are you going to bring Sienna or just no, Gracie? No, just Gracie. <laughs> and then Hope's got two, so we got six pups. Six, all right. Again, you're leaving a little break there for the white. Is that what you're doing around the image and dark? And um, I'm, I'm going to do dark all the way across the top here. All the way across the top? And I'm leaving, uh, I'm just kind of working around where I, where I had those clouds. Okay. And you're kind of doing like what kind of brush stroke? Yes. So um, for the sky, I, for the background quite often, I tend to go a little smoother with the paint. And I do what I call this little crisscross, kind of long brush strokes that kind of crisscross each other. So you cover up that cotton canvas uh, with a pretty good amount of paint and it should slide under your brush. I always say your brush should never touch the canvas. There should be plenty of paint sliding between the two. Between the canvas and the brush, there should be a layer of paint sliding along. And they're just kind of long, flat brush strokes that crisscross. And the reason I do the crisscross is because it tends to cover up that canvas pretty well. And the, the texture of the cotton duck canvas isn't always that pretty. It's not nearly as pretty as the, the texture of a brush stroke. So that's why we try to really cover it up. And then I, I'm gonna start transitioning now to my medium blue. So the dark, and this is true about the atmosphere, the darkest blue in the sky is, is more straight up overhead. And as you come down closer to the horizon, the sky does get lighter. And that has to do with at atmospheric particles of you know, moisture and lint in the air. And you're looking through less atmosphere when you look straight up. If you're looking straight towards the horizon, you're seeing through a lot more atmosphere of, like I said, dust and particles. And some sea towns, I'm just now transitioning into that middle shade around that big, around that big diagonal cloud. We're in a little bit more into the middle shade, which I think I made my middle shade a little dark too. I'm gonna to lighten that up with white. So we all just was a beautiful water, lucky girl. Yes, I was visiting family in Florida. First time I've been out of town since the pandemic. Uh, it was nice going down to Florida and this was before the CDC lifted its mask guidelines, so I was happy to be maskless. Or yeah, after yeah, after they had just looked yeah. at it. And the last video, I think I was telling you all I was heading for a little break down in Florida. And of course, the, they were still wearing masks. I was there about a week before Leela, so uh, I think I was telling you all in the last video, in, in Kentucky, if we want to see the ocean, we have to drive about 10 hours at least, mm -hmm. <laughs> usually 11 or 12 or more. Um, but we do have some airlines now that can get us there. And so most people uh, in Kentucky, if you're gonna head to the water, you either head to South Carolina or Florida to get to the ocean anyway. And most of us love getting to our chance to get to the ocean. Any chance, yeah. There goes the UPS man. Woo! Here's great. <laughs> Making some noise there. Yeah, so Liel and Towns have both been painting with me at this studio yeah, for quite some time. Mm -hmm. About six years. Yeah, because I've been in this studio for seven years. So. so what I'm doing, I'm bringing that lightest shade down, and then I'm stopping just before the horizon line. I'm stopping about a half an inch before. Oops. <laughs> <laughs> and what I'm going to do is I'm going to take that lightest color 
And, then, and you'll notice this now, because I'm going to tell my students things like this. They go outside and they notice it the next night. They're like, that's exactly what happens. I'm going to take that lightest blue and put some more white in it. And then I'm going to go over here to my alizarin crimson. I think on your uh, diagram it will say purple red. And I'm going to get the smallest little speck of purple red I can on the tip of my palette knife. And mix it in there so it's going to make the lightest, prettiest little shade of pinky purple. It's funny when I tell students just the little tiniest little speck and they'll put a big speck in and say, oh, I see what you mean. That was supposed to be a tiny speck. So. Never doubt your instructor. <laughs> And here I now have put three specks in because I was so <laughs> trying to be so cautious. And this is more of a white. Yeah, I, I, in fact, my, I'm trying to get it to be a, the, almost a light pinky purple. Okay. And that that's kind of what you see down right along the horizon. Mm -hmm. All right, let me try this color again. Right where the sky, like the, the furthest, furthest part of the sky, furthest away from you, right when it meets the horizon line. And it just a kind of a soft little glow, of a cup, barely, barely any blue atmosphere left in it. These water soluble paints, they're, they're a little yeah. hard for me to get used to at first, but I'm really, nice. they're really nice, aren't they? Mm -hmm. Smooth. They are. They are. Okay, so I'm going to move on. Towns, you can keep on working where you're working. Mm -hmm. And I'm going to, or we can, you can pause. Uh, or you can move on to the water with me and we'll come back during the break and okay. have you finish. Oh, uh, actually, we're not moving to water yet. We're going to the clouds. Mm -hmm. So for the clouds, I'm going to do my usual formula of make three colors. The first color is just gonna be pure white. And I think need some more white there, Miss Lou. Yeah. On my way. That's, so a light, medium, and dark for the clouds. The light's gonna be just pure white. And then we're gonna make two shades of lavender. So I always say back to your grade school lessons, if you remember, red and blue make purple. So uh, to make lavender, you, you gotta stay away from that orangey red, our cat, or, or scarlet or vermilion red. We're going to take a little bit of that red I was just talking about, that purple red, that's normally called alizarin crimson, but on your box it says purple red. Just take a little tiny bit of that. And then I'm gonna take a bigger amount of ultramarine blue, that's your cool dark blue. And then we start adding some white in there to get our medium purple and and I think when I say medium purple it worked it's up in the clouds so we probably want to keep it more like a light medium purple but the other thing is I said to my fiance the other day I don't know where we were golf course or the park we were looking this is the park walking the dogs we look up at the clouds and I said what colors do you see in those clouds and he said I don't see any color in there I said, you don't see a little purple and a little blue and a little pink and a little yellow? And he's like, oh, I do see that now. So <laughs> you'd really be surprised at how much you start seeing color everywhere that you've never mm -hmm. noticed before. So you're doing three shades of... Yeah, so then the, the darker shades is going to have a little less white. It's going to be a, a little bit of purple red, a little more bit of ultramarine, and... Not as much white, and that's just going to be for a couple of those little dark places in those clouds. All right, so I'm going to go back, take my brush, rinse it off, and I'm going to take the lightest color, which was pure white. And now, my students, especially when they were new with me, always wondered how do you get a light white next to a dark blue without the two of them kind of making a big mess. So what I do is I lay this paint down a little bit carefully and just don't touch that blue 
just kind of push it along that that edge and uh, in this case it's all right if you just go ahead and let the corner of your brush touch that blue up above and you can kind of get a pretty kind of a thin cloudy look so I'm going to just put load my brush with that paint on the end and just sort of tap tap close up to that blue sky and then once I have it in, I might just allow that edge of that brush to tap into the blue sky and it becomes a pretty little edge there. I see an area where I forgot, I think first time I painted this, I forgot as well, to put color, sky color between those sails up top there. Okay. So um, the pure white going up top, we'll put some more pure white in in a little, little bit. I'm already dragging a lot of color through there. It's okay, because they're clouds. You do see sky through the thinnest parts of the cloud. I'm gonna take the medium purple and the bulk of that cloud. And again, I'll insert the photo that I used from the Royalty Free website. Um, if you're going to sell your paintings someday, you've got to make sure you use photographs from the internet that are royalty free, so you're not infringing on copyright. You know, it's hard. It, before we used websites and royalty free, you know, I was it was a long time ago. <laughs> um, you had to rely on photos that you could find either in a magazine or that you would have taken yourself. Um, so. If, if I wanted to paint a picture of a sailboat with a big blue summer sky, I would have to try to find a photograph I'd taken or dig through a, ma a magazine. We still like doing that. Yes, we still do use our own photos quite a bit. And you give a file, of which I think is always a great resource. Yeah, that's right. You know, um, let's say it's a rainy day one day and you just decide you want to sit down and paint and you think you get all your things out and you're like, well, what am I going to paint? If you keep a file, of all your ideas, when that rainy day arrives and you want to sit down and paint something, you just reach for your file and see what inspired you. If it inspired you enough to put it in the file, then it will probably inspire you again. So I put in a little bit, the next, I started with the white layer at the top, then I did the medium, and then I did a little row of the darker. And now I'm putting in a little more of the medium. I'm gonna put a little of that medium color in that upper cloud. And you know, the nice thing about these brushes, it has that sharp chiseled end. So That's you can, a great brush. I know, you can oh, just kind of tap along and get the shapes you need. So I'm gonna to go to the pure white up here on this cloud up here and just, you see how I'm just kind of tapping and swishing my brush along. And and the one thing that's nice about the clouds, if the colors do blend together, it, like I said, it looks like a natural cloud. So it's okay. And I, I kind of make little curvy strokes, um, like, like almost like you're making like uh, little half circles clouds have those kind of round shapes to them. I'm going to go one more time with my pure white and just kind of add some highlights to those purples that I laid in. See how I'm just layering that on top with a little some little swervy strokes. And I grew up on a lake up in the upstate New York area and this looks a lot like a summer day there on the lake. I think we're gonna go back. I know Liel has got a trip planned upstate New York. I do. I'm going uh, late with her July. boss yeah, into August. And uh, I think I might be taking David up to see my little hometown in upstate New York. How much is your hometown? Well, it's a little tiny town, maybe not even 3,000 people. So it's uh, not really well known, but it's beautiful and historic. And it's, the name is Casanova, New York. Mm. Oh, it's awful. Very pretty place. And I 
think that I'm going to break this into another step, the background, because we've got a whole big step to go here on the water. So how about if we make five steps to this project and we'll take a break here. And when we come back, we'll start with the water. Sounds good. On a day when the wind is perfect, the sail just needs to open and the world is full. Okay, we're back for step three, or we could say step 2B. <laughs> um, we're going to do the water. So I'm going to have to move the chair a little bit here. Okay, so we're gonna pick up our palette knife again, and we're going to use the cool blue. So on your palette, the cerulean and phthalo blues are what we call warmer blues. The ultramarine, meaning deep sea ultramarine, is your cool blue. So we've got a much warmer blue and then a much cooler blue for the water. Um, and I'm going to use my typical, my usual rule of thumb, three shades of blue. The, um, the first shade is going to be Ultramarine, by its, well, not, not quite by itself. I'm going to add a little of this dark brown. I'm going to make almost a little bit of a blackish color. Just a tiny bit of a burnt umber brown in that ultramarine blue, just to kind of, that's going to be these deep shadowy colors that I have down in that reflection, kind of the deeper part of the waves. And then ultramarine blue with just a little tiny bit of white in it is going to be our most of our watercolor and then i'm going to make a lighter shade i'm going to take the ultramarine blue and i'm going to add a little bit of cerulean blue just because it's going to reflect the sky a little bit so we got a little bit of that sky blue and then i'm going to put a little white in it and that's a really pretty ocean color. So that that um, lightest pile was a little bit of cerulean, a little uh, good bit of ultramarine, and then a little bit of white. Okay. And it's a little more turquoisey looking kind of. Mm -hmm. Such a pretty color. Yes. I love Maybe too. I feel like that's a really popular color. Aqua turquoise. Yeah, cerulean blue. Uh, people sure. always, and more people than not, say they love that color. Uh, okay, so I'm going to go right into that middle blue. Like I said, that's the bulk, the bulk of this ocean color, and I'm just going to start using long horizontal, long horizontal strokes. I'm just going to alternate right away with the with that cerulean blue color. And as the strokes get closer down towards the front of the canvas, you can start wiggling them to look like little waves. I don't put the wiggly wave strokes far away in the back because it's you want to create the illusion of distance, that that's pretty far back. And you wouldn't really see actual waves way back in the background. So I'm a little smoother, longer, flatter horizontal strokes in the back. I also used that little bit lighter cerulean color in the back just to make that look like it's a little lighter and further away. Don't forget to put it in between the sails if you have a little spot of like, where you can see the water between the sails. Town, speaking of sailboats and boats, Towns and her husband do a lot of boating on the Ohio River right yeah, here. There's quite a bit of boating here in Kentucky. A lot of people don't know that we, yeah, there are a lot of lakes and rivers in Kentucky and then the, the big, the big river right here in Louisville is the Ohio River. Which we are located right directly on. Mm-hmm, yep. Just a, you could probably drive straight, what, a couple of miles and we'd be there. Very convenient. But it's not this color blue. <laughs> <laughs> it is known for being kind of a rather muddy color. Yeah. Although occasionally you can get out there where there's some sky being, some blue sky being reflected. I'm probably going to have to make more. This was a half the canvas we're covering here, so um, I think I'm okay on the blue paint. Okay, though. I'm ready whenever you need me. Right. <laughs> You're still using your medium shade blue. I'm alternating the two. Okay. Yes, the medium and then the lighter cerulean one. Just kind of alternating those. I'm not putting that darkest shade in yet. 
I'm gonna probably use that darkest shade as more of an accent color. Mm -hmm. I think Kathy invited me to show people how messy a palette can be. <laughs> <laughs> I have to look at my palette during break. Oh, I think mine's just as messy over here. Oh, she's very precise. <laughs> I'm, a, I'm a real person over here, people. I am. Uh, I tend to be a little less less messy only because I've been painting so long mm -hmm. that I found it was easier and quicker to do certain things if you didn't have to stop and clean up messes along the way or or have to get a new palette paper out or whatever. So I'm. People say I tend to be a little yeah. less messy, but I don't know about that. You also remind us that it's a kitchen. Do you yeah. want to work in a messy kitchen? <laughs> yeah, so the palette is, um, that's the only place you have to make all your pretty colors. And so when you run out of room, I'll see people trying to make all, 10 beautiful colors in this little one inch <laughs> square area. And, um, you know, I say, it's just palette paper. Go ahead and get out some more. Yeah. And um, speaking of that, since I send two sheets of palette paper, I'm going to make more of this. I'm skipping around here. I'm going to make more of this medium color, which was just ultramarine with a little bit of white. Um, if you want, you don't have a hobby store close by where you could get artists' palette paper. And, and by the way, if you're going to do that, don't buy the one that says acrylic because that will soak up all your oils and dry it out and dry out your paint. So make sure you buy the palette paper that says uh, made for oils. And the other thing is if uh, you could use a plastic plate or um, a plastic tray or glass. Or glass. Mm -hmm. Definitely. You could use a glass plate or a piece of glass if I'm an old picture frame or something. Mm -hmm. And and then when you want to store the paint, you just take your palette knife and scoop it up and put it in a plastic container in your in your freezer. All right, I could make more of that medium blue. Mm -hmm. So if you've subscribed for more than one month, you, your, your bigger tubes of paint will start coming in your boxes. And uh, you can build a whole set of all your colors. Uh, you'll also be able to go on to the store on my Your Paint Box website and you can buy some more supp additional supplies. Um, I'll mail them right out to you. I finally sent, and this morning, opened up my store on Amazon started in the process in January. So your paint box is now also listed in Amazon subscription boxes, as well as on Crate Joy, as well as you can buy directly from my website. That's what I was gonna ask you, if we're not a member of paint box subscription, can you just buy supplies from your website? Mm -hmm. Yep. Uh, I'm in the process of loading books and supplies and a lot of reference material that you, you, know, you can kind of see what my favorite uh, tools are. Now the water, I've just kind of painted it on pretty much those two shades of blue. I'm gonna come in now and take that darkest color I made and I'm just gonna start really putting in the accent colors for those waves, those little ripples. You know, that at Liella, you were saying the water was so nice when you were down in Sarasota. Mm -hmm. Uh, when I was down in the Clearwater area a few weeks ago, the water was the perfect temperature. And everybody, for, you know, the waves aren't usually that big on the Gulf side, but we right. had a windy day and the waves were pretty big and everybody was out in the water just giggling and laughing and bouncing up and down. It was just so much fun. Yeah, we actually, my brother took his, took me out on he, his boat and, uh, we it was perfect it was calm it was wonderful we were able to do some snorkeling on some of the little wow. things and, uh, yeah it was great now you're doing the dark i just parts. kind of squiggled some darker lines through there and then i'm going to take i have a little leftover from that lightest sky color mm -hmm. Sometimes I, instead of using my white pile, if I have something here that's almost white, I just kind of use it up. 
And I'm going to start squiggling that in as the reflection of those two sails. You know, we were talking about how every, what, during the break, how everybody's paintings look so different. It's fun to kind of see. Mm -hmm. We don't like actually compare, but we just like kind of like to see what people have done differently. And every time we do this exercise, my second painting is completely so different than my first painting. So not only are our paintings different from each other's, they're even different from the ones we do ourselves. It's just a different day and different time and different circumstances. So this painting's coming out a little different. Yeah. Yeah. So now I'm putting, I'm squiggling towns. Can you see these little lighter lines that are just right below the sails? Okay. So it's the reflection of the white sails. And I'm gonna take a break here, let everybody get caught up. Meet me back here for the sailboat. On a day when the wind is perfect, the sail just needs to open and the world is full. Okay, we're back here for the next step, which is going to be the boat. And I'm going to, this is going to sound funny, but I'm going to say let's make three shades of white. So a lot of my students, when they first come in, they don't think white and black have lots of different shades and colors until they realize there are thousands and maybe millions of shades of white and black. So uh, just like the clouds, the three shades, the first shade will be pure white. Um, so I'm just going to pick up some pure white and put that down as our lightest sail color. And then I'm going to make um, a medium color, which is going to be a tint, which means it's gonna be almost white. I'm going to take white and add a little bit of your cerulean blue, and just a little. And that's going to be, I think, uh, actually, I'm gonna split that pile in half because I had too much color in it. Um, Leo, I may I have some white, please? Those things we forget to do during break because we end up talking. <laughs> Which we do a lot in class, don't we? Or some classes. Uh, yeah. Sometimes class is quiet. Sometimes class is not quiet. And it depends on the class. Thank you very much. Do you need more, you think? Uh, no, I think I don't think I so. Yes. Cut that pile in half again. That little bit of cerulean I put in went, went a little too far. Just want the lightest, lightest shade. So this color is, um, this medium color that we're making is the white sail reflecting blue sky. So we talk a lot about reflected color when we paint because um, the, the color from the sky actually bounces off of that white sail, so it makes it kind of a light blue color. And then I'm going to make, this color is the shadow color. So this, the light is coming from the right side here, and the front sail is casting a shadow on the second, on the sail behind, and I don't know my sailboat terms enough to know what those sails are called. <laughs> Even though we used to have a little sailboat when we lived in New York State on, on a little lake. Um, darkest color here is the cerulean, this time I'm gonna add a little bit of burnt umber in there to just kind of keep it kind of gray. I don't, I don't want the shadow color to be too bright. So um, whenever I get a color, my students have learned this, whenever I get a color that's gone wrong, I cut it in half to fix it rather than yep. trying to fix a big pile. Let's mm -hmm. just fix a small pile. So I, that's kind of wrong, I think. I'm gonna mm -hmm. move that over here. It's, it's uh, too dark to be my shadow color. Well, and nine times out of ten, you'll always end up using the color. Yeah, the that color that I so moved nice. aside, we can use it somewhere else for something else. That's right. Good Nothing point. is ever wasted. Not really, especially since you can freeze these paints. Mm -hmm. What would you call that color? Like you said... It's almost a uh, cerulean with a little bit of umber. It almost came out teal. Kind of a gray, like a grayed out teal. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it is. And I hope that looks right when we get it on the sail, but we can always fix it when we get it there. Okay, so I'm going to pick up 
clean off my brush and I'm going to pick up the pure white and it's going to go over here on the left side of that left sail. And I'm going to push that paint right up close to the water and that blue sky, but try not to touch. Sometimes you see a little bit of your yellow ochre drawing in between what I call the gap areas and we can fill those little gaps in later. And I like this chisel brush because you can kind of keep nice control of what, with what you're doing. And I'm just doing long flat strokes. And then from there, I'm going to go right into the shadow color. Like I said, that first sail is casting a real pretty shadow on the full second sail. Somebody out there have to write in on our Facebook page and tell me what those sails are called. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah, we are motor boaters, no? Yeah. There's a mast, that's all I know. A mast and a, I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> and my father was in the Marines and so he knew a lot about boats. And my what? grand, I feel real bad, but he didn't build sailboats, but my grand, uh, granddad built the classic wooden boats. Oh, what brand? Yeah. Um, well, he was this, he modeled them off of like Chris Craft or Hacker Craft. Or Hinkley or? Um, yeah. He had his own, um, it was Hugh, uh, Hugh St. Custom Boats. Oh, gotcha. Was so, that in Florida? Uh, it was, yes, mm -hmm. before he passed away. We, my brothers admire those wooden boats and there's a brand, uh, it's called Hinkley. Most people know about the Chris Craft boat, but Hinkley's been around as yeah. long and does beautiful, makes beautiful boats. And um, we we go up to Maine and we go into the Hinkley uh, factory or I want to call it oh, factory boat. Yeah. You know, Martha Stewart had a Hinkley picnic boat. Yes. Yeah. Um, so so we go by Martha Stewart's place when we're up there. Oh, wow. And my brother is an architect mm -hmm. in New England, and he, one of his clients has a big Hinkley boat, and we go out on it. Oh. And we go past. Um, we went past Martha Stewart's boat. He showed us which one it was. Ooh. In fact, you know, I was saying that this reminded me. This scene here reminded me of an upstate New York day with the blue skies and blue water. But it definitely reminds me of a Maine, mm -hmm. a Maine day with those real crisp, clear blue skies. So what did you do for your uh, yeah the, for the sale? the main sale? Hey, maybe that's what it's called the main sale. Main sale. Yeah, that makes sense. <laughs> um, I know I was talking enough. You could probably watch me at the palette, but Towns can't see me over there. Um, I'm using the middle blue. Okay. I'm using um, it's reflecting a little more of the sky, mm -hmm. and I'm going to come back in and put some white in there. So the, the Facebook page, I'm trying to encourage everybody to get involved on there. It's a great way for me to actually meet you, become Facebook friends. And uh, you know, these two will tell you, I love getting to know my students. We all become friends. And um, I'd love to have you all post some of your work and share it with us. And we won't necessarily do critiques on there, but we'll cheer, be cheerleaders for each other. That's always You know what I'm going to do right now? I'm going to be brave. And I'm going to go over here to this dark watercolor that I have left. And I'm going to just load the chisel end of my brush with a little of that. And I'm going to come down with that mast, which is kind of attached to that second. Look, I'm just drawing a straight line. So a lot of times students will say, I can't take an art class. I can't draw a straight line. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and we don't really have to draw straight lines very often. So I don't know what they're talking about. And I'm going to go on down. Oh, let's see. Uh, I do remember from the photograph, I'll insert that photograph here, um, here or there during the film. There was a little shadow side where this sail wrapped around the, uh, wrapped into a shadow. So I'm going to just take that chisel into my brush again with the darker paint and just kind of drag a little wrapped up shadow there. And you know what I'm going to do since I have that, I, I've got a little mixture of my light sky color and this dark black that we made for the water. And I'm going to use that, I'm going to put that in there for the inside of the boat. 
See that inside where the two people are sitting in there? Just making that kind of that medium gray color. And the boat itself, I'm gonna use the pure white right up here at the angled front tip of the boat. Are you taking off? Oh. Um, so the front of the boat's a little wider because like I said, we've got our sun, our light source coming from the right today. And so I'm gonna throw a little shadow color one of our darker blue shadow colors on the that little U-shaped back of the boat because that's in a little more shadow. Don't be the aft. <laughs> <laughs> the aft of the boat. Yes. We're making this the, up. In the bow of the boat. Yes, up on the bow we have the brighter white. And I think that stays the same regardless of, of what the, boat of what the boat is. is. Oh, stern, stern. stern. The best. Aft is, well, starboard is right and aft is left, I believe. Really? I believe. I think I used to know those things when we were out on our little sailboat, but I was a pretty small child then, so. Huh? We did a lot of canoeing. With our, yeah. our golden retrievers would climb in the canoe. We had two canoes yeah. and the goldens would climb in with us and they couldn't wait to go out on the lake. And we'd take little fishing poles and early on a Saturday morning and we'd fish for perch. Is that why there's a little golden retriever in this boat? It was, it was actually a little person. <laughs> I'm going to say it's a golden retriever. <laughs> well, it's now a golden retriever. I'm, I'm going to change it. <laughs> right now, it could be, well, it was two little people. Oh, I thought it was me. I think I need dog. to put a little dog on there. You could make it people. I think everybody is now fully allowed to make it whichever they want. Absolutely. Freedom of pain. Freedom of so I put the white on the front of the boat, whatever we decided to call that. And let's go with just kind of a light medium in the middle section, mostly whitish. And then we do pick up a little shadow as that boat curves around to the back. So what I might do is just pick up some of this brown. That's a little too brown, a little blue. I love to see how surprised new students are at what they have created. They just sometimes amaze themselves. I love it. Me too. <laughs> Especially those first couple of times you paint, you're just so pleased. Putting a little more shadow on that back, on the very back, and a little more shadow towards the back of the side of the boat. I'm gonna blend that in a little bit. And I put a little stripe on the boat. I thought it looked pretty. I'm going to use the chisel end of my brush again with my ultramarine blue. And just draw a little pretty little blue line. It's like a little stripe on the boat. And then we can put in our people, as many people as you want. One, two, three, a dog, lots of dogs. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so to draw the people in, this is where I... I say we draw more than we paint. I'm going to take the corner of my nice little chisel brush here, take the corner and we can kind of draw. I'm going to pick up the burnt umber with just the corner of my brush. And I'm going to put in the little head of a person, just tap a little round blob. And then next to that, see it could either be a couple out for a day on the boat or a man and his dog, a boy and his dog. <laughs> And so I'm putting a little gold blob, which we'll have to, uh, Winston comes, I think Winston's, uh, my daughter's golden retriever is in the picture that you all get in the your first paint box. There's an introduction card about me and that picture is with my daughter's golden Winston. Um, and I did grow up with golden retrievers and I do love them. So you put in whatever little dog, or now I've got a long-haired blonde in there next to it. <laughs> and I might just put, you see what I'm doing here? I took a little bit of white and I 
tap that corner of my brush into a little burnt sienna and it makes almost a skin color. I'm gonna put a little face on this person. Well, not really a face, but see, just a little skin. And we're gonna stop here and take a break and we come back for the last step, which we call finishing up. And we're gonna talk about these, these gap areas where I have a big gold, my line that I drew the sail with is all showing through. We're gonna cover up some of those. And that will be the final step. So we'll take a break and see you in a few minutes. All right, so we're back at the, stay, the step that we call finishing up. And like I said, I'm gonna pull all these little gaps together. And I keep this painting straight during the video, but it's a lot easier. I'll go ahead and show you all sometimes if I'm painting without an easel like this, I just can pick it up and hold it in your hand and I'm going to fill and turn it into an angle that you know, you're know you more comfortable with. I'm going to just fill in some of those little gap areas. Maybe add a little more sky here and there. Did you saw your horizon? I'm doing that right now. That's what I'm going to do too. Look a little bit jaggy. Yeah, I'm just kind of straightening up my horizon line a little bit. So this is, like I said, at the final editing, like water on the horizon's flat. It, even if there, you know there might be waves out there, they're so far away that it, the horizon always appears flat. Um, so I'm just kind of smoothing out the horizon. Uh, I'm going to go back up here and play in these clouds and kind of just do some little fluffing along those edges where the yellow ochre drawing is showing through. Try to keep your brush pretty clean, just a little bit of tip paint at the end. Wipe it off pretty often so you're not going to be dragging two colors together that shouldn't be together. And. filling in all these little like, yellow drawing lines. I don't let that slow me down early mm -hmm. on. That's why I kind of let those lines show through to the end and then I take a few minutes at the end here to fill those in. The smaller painting for this month is a little the little face of a mallard duck and it's really cute. Uh -huh. Okay, let's see. Usually we check our shapes to see if anything's really way off. Like the face of that bunny last month. <laughs> <laughs> we had a couple of laughs about that. He's a duke. We did. Uh, overall, I'm looking here, I think I'm pretty happy with this project. <clears throat> we might, I heard an oops over there from Towns. Yeah, it's but... all Towns likes to overpaint. Fix things that don't need to be fixed. That, yeah, we, a lot of us do that. Oh. A lot of us do that. So a lot of us keep on fixing when we, when we should just stop. <laughs> it's so fun to keep painting. Don't want to stop. Again, I'm going to turn this canvas a little bit so I can tap into this white sail right here. And you see how I get just enough paint on that little chisel under that brush that I can just kind of do some smaller detail work. And we're getting close here. We started making plans yesterday for another kind of pool party. That's the one. Uh, one of our students has a lovely horse farm out in the country here in Kentucky, and she has a beautiful pool. And every summer we have our big annual pool party out there with all the stu well, students from a couple of classes that she's in. And we didn't have it last year because of COVID. That's right. But most everybody is vaccinated and... The mask mandate is lifted, so we're planning mm -hmm. the pool party. Also, this will be fun to include in the videos. 
we're going to have the student art show this year. Oh, oh great. great. You know? Uh, there's only been two years in the last 20 or so that I've not had the annual student art show. Uh, a couple of years ago it was because I was invited by a friend to go to France. And that's where David and I went and ended up getting engaged under the Eiffel Tower. Mm -hmm. And um, so we didn't have the art show that year because I was gone. And then last year because of COVID. So it'll be really fun this year to have everybody get together. We have sometimes as many as 200 people here for this art show. They come, people bring everyone from all over the city. They come we in. do it outside. I know, with a big tent. Yeah, and a beautiful corridor. I know. Right here the great patio. And we wouldn't have to set up all that complicated yeah, lighting. Exactly. <laughs> all right, I think I'm happy here. Towns and I will meet you back here um, for a little discussion about how we did. I, I tell you what, one more thing. Last little thing, I forgot. Don't forget to sign your painting. Oh yeah, and Leo always just <laughs> remind us to sign our paintings. Be proud That's of your work. Be proud of your paintings. Um, remember it's practice. So if it's not the most wonderful masterpiece, just remember it was practice and uh, you're only going to get better with practice. I put a last little wave right along the, cur the bottom of the boat. I put like a little wave lapping up against it. And that's it. So we'll see you here uh, in the studio in a few minutes. Okay, well here we are, <laughs> finished. <laughs> no, we forgot to uh, film an intermission again, but that's okay. Oh, we did. But uh, we talked enough during this uh, film that you probably got to hear enough of us today. Yes. <laughs> um, so Towns, this is her first time. What did you think about doing this? It was fun. I like how fast it was. And you think they're pretty easy, right? Oh, very easy. Yeah. And, yeah. Yes. and I think you described the colors really well. Good, uh, thank you. Put in. Good. Good. Mine's obviously very loose. And I love how different. Strong. Yeah, they look great. And I like how chunky and impressionistic yeah. Towns is. So, you know, you can do your own take on the yeah. on the projects, but it's going to happen anyway because it's very much like handwriting. How, what, however your hand works and your hand-eye coordination mm -hmm. and the way you see colors and the way you move your brush is going to be very individual. So we're all going to have very individual. Mm -hmm. I, when we have workshops with like 10 or 12 people and we all do the same a painting, paint the same image. Um, we like to look at them all at the end. And like I said, we don't compare. Yeah. We just like to cheerlead for each other and, and just mm -hmm. acknowledge how fabulous everybody has done. This is fun. So just, and this is just therapy. Yeah, yeah. yeah. fun, creative therapy. And uh, that's what we do here at the studio. Mm -hmm. We hope you guys are enjoying it at home. We'll see you next time in the summer. On a day when the wind is perfect, the sail just needs to open and the world is full of beauty. Today is such a on a day